Thank you. Well, we're glad to be here. The three of us are really glad to be here. Um, if you haven't seen the paper, we'll pass that out. So what we want to do today is give you a little idea of how this started, why we started, and also uh, some of the challenges we're facing as, as a new organization. So um, we'll, each of us will join in and kind of give you a little piece of the story because we each have our own little piece of the story. We only met for the first time yesterday in person. Yeah. We have been meeting on Zoom, even though we are in Mifflinburg, et cetera, but we are really in sync for people who have not known each other. We, you'll we'll learn a little bit more, but we're really in sync. So here's how it started. I've been a longtime person involved with social change and helping communities to do the things that they need to get the things that they want in all sorts of ways, electoral and social movement uh, campaigns and so forth. However, I was on a Zoom call in the beginning of our, our Zoom calls in 2020, and somebody who was new to all of this, who had gotten avoid, uh, involved because of uh, uh, the death of uh, George Floyd, he said, you all seem to know what you're doing. You all seem to know how you, how do you make decisions? I don't get this. I'm an IT person. And so I know all, if you wanted to ask me, how do I get to be an IT person? I could tell you what courses to take. I could tell you where to go and, and, and get some information online. So I'm asking you this, where do I go and get information online or what courses do I take to learn to do the kind of organizing that you all are talking about? And I'm now a part of, he said, now I'm a part of. And you, you know how Zoom is, you all, everyone just sits there. <laughs> <laughs> no one could say anything. And that's when I thought, he's really right. And I, over the years, I know a lot of this stuff. I'm not just going from the seat of my pants. I'm going from things in my own experience, things I've read, things I've heard people talk about. I have a whole wealth of information, but it's all up here. And there are not a lot of places that it's written down. And so that's where Rock, the Rural Organizing Center, really started. It's like, I want to take I'm in my mid 70s. I'm hoping I have another 10 good years of being able to work. I don't know, but that would be nice. By this end of that time, I want what's up here out on paper and out in the minds of a lot of other people. So that's really how the idea of this started. I also knew that there are many people who do not have access. We don't teach how government functions very well in our schools anymore. I think a lot of us are in agreement with that. It doesn't happen in our schools. We don't teach people how to get, we don't even teach people how to register to vote and make it easy for them to register to vote. Some places it's getting harder to register to vote. So there's a lot of ways that we don't really teach people how to be involved in your government. And as a democracy, if you, people are not involved in their government and people are not involved in their society and don't make the decisions about what they want for themselves, their families, their communities, et cetera, democracy doesn't work. It's based on that. So we have a, there's a big gap in, in that. And that's really the second part of where my thinking went. It's like, I know that there are organizations that help organize people who already want to do something and kind of have some idea of what to do on many different levels. The Rotary Club does a lot of really good work. Um, the, the, there's a lot of, you know, we have a de Democratic and Republican parties that do a lot of work and get you involved. There are a lot of different ways. There's the Hub for Progress that gets people who want to get involved. There are a lot of different organizations, but it's all still based on people knowing what they want and already feeling that they have agency. They have an ability to make something happen. It's all based on that. And I started thinking, what about the people who don't have agency and don't understand that? So the first thing I did is I made a list in terms of government, how our government functions, how social movements work and how electoral politics work. Those three different areas, I sort of broke it down in those three different areas. And I wrote down the topics that I thought would be interesting and important for people to know. Once again, going like, what do I work from up here when I'm faced with an issue, okay? 
I just wrote those down. I, I kind of spread those out and showed them to people. There were a couple of suggestions. Well, maybe you should take that one out. Maybe you should include this or something. But basically, that's what it was. And then I had a group of wonderful women who gave me feedback on things. I had I said, okay, should I write a half hour thing, a 20 minute thing? And they went, <laughs> and they said, four minutes <laughs> max. <laughs> And so I went, whoa, okay, well, that really makes me have to get right to it. I can't sort of meander around in my thoughts. I got to get right to it. So I did four minute presenta written presentations, sounded, you know, made sure that I written, wrote, read it out. So it was only four minutes for all these different topics. And they are good editors. They all come from editing background and they mercilessly edited things. So they took out extraneous things and made things clear, et cetera. And then I went, I have no idea how to package this to reach the people that I want to reach. I just have no idea. And so I sat with that for almost two years, thinking to myself, there's something from the Tao Te Ching, which is, says, do you have the patience to wait until the mud settles and the water is clear? Can you remain unmoving until the right answer arises by itself? And I would just go, I just got to wait. The right answer is that I don't have any idea what to do. I would have friends who knew me well would say, well, Penn, where's it going? You used to, you know, you've got an idea. And the next thing, and the organization's up and running. And you do, and, and what's happening? Nothing. I said, I'm just waiting. And so finally, there was a meeting of a group that I was working with. And Tiffany was also part of this group. Um, that was uh, working uh, with the school board in Mifflinburg around the issues of equity committee, masking, CRT, all these issues that are going on. And so we all were trying to work with the school board. We didn't, our, our, our thinking did not prevail, I have to say on all those issues, but we, we formed a group of us who then people from Mifflinburg who grown up there, many had children, and they wanted their children to go to school there, and they were, you know, working on these issues. So um, I said, I'd like to present at one of our meetings, we had a, a, a human library event, and I, I said, I want to present after this human library event, which is just people who are usually people don't hear from, come to the library, and you go around, and you hear them speak. Lewis Briggs had one, we had one in Mifflinburg, and so we were kind of debriefing that. And I said, I'd like to present this idea of a rural organizing center. Okay, so I did. And everyone said, oh, that's a great idea. That's a wonderful, but I don't have time. And then this wonderful woman spoke up and said, I'd like to work with you. And it all changed. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over to Tiffany to talk about what drew you and where you went from there and how Felicia got involved. <laughs> um, so yeah, after the meeting with Penn, we came up with a time and a day and she said yeah you know I can reach out to you and we'll I'll, I'll send you the modules we'll go from there and so she sent them to me and I was I think we were still on the phone and I was looking over everything and I remember thinking I needed this info like <laughs> when I first you know in high school like I I wish that I had this info a while ago so I, I said to her I said yeah sign me up we will figure out a way to to package this and immediately going through the modules she had them outlined in a nice way that I'm like, okay, we can break this up, whether it's PowerPoint or I said to her about maybe doing YouTube presentations, just short clips, sort of like an like an online course. Um, but I'm I'm not the greatest with technology. Um, so I was playing around with things and I put together a little presentation based on one of the modules and I showed Pat and I'm like, yeah, this this should work. So I started on other presentations and um so Felicia is my sister, um, and this was back in, was it like March, April? Because it, it was still, it was still, it was really nice. Yeah. Um, and we used to, and we we still do, we go for what we call skate dates. So we go to Williamsport, we put our roller skates on and we go skating, we go for miles and we just talk. And I was telling her about, about rock. And I said, yeah, this info that Penn has, you know, it's going to teach and it's going to help improve so many lives. And 
she said, well, you know, you could probably make TikToks with that info too. And, you know, Instagram and, and, you know, and she's awesome with technology. So she's like, you should send me this stuff and I'll see if I can help out in some way. So then we were talking about the different platforms we could use. And then my husband, he was listening to us the one day we were on the patio. And he's like, you know, you should probably start by getting a domain. And I'm like, well, what is that? <laughs> so then he is giving input and he shows me how to make this domain. And so we sat there and we worked on that. And then we started with the the web, the website was, I mean, it, it, we're learning each and every day how to compile all of this and, and get the different platforms in sync. And it's a work in progress, but we are so proud with, with how far it's come. And we're working on recruiting members, but not only getting a huge number of members, but we actually, we want to aim for, and, and one of our goals is to reach people who feel like they don't have a voice or they feel like they don't know enough about politics or about government to vote. Because too often, I mean, even in our family, we hear people say, well, I don't really vote. I don't know anything about that. So we want to reach those people who feel like they don't have a voice. Um, and especially, you know, going to vote, it's it's eye-opening to not see anybody your age out voting it's like we have this amazing power to use our voices. And so those are the people that we want to reach, as well as younger individuals who aren't being taught the basics in school. Yeah. Um, and Tiff and I actually went to the same college. And at the college, we, we helped bring um, a chapter of American Association of University Women to that college. And that's really where I started learning about all the social issues and stuff. So I'm fairly new to the whole organizing thing. Um, and it's just been a fun process of learning and we're hoping to grow and with a community who's willing to, you know, grow together and learn and it's just been so exciting. And as, um, as first generation college students, just having to go through certain hurdles, we, um, we really want to help individuals out there as well with learning the info, but then also developing leadership skills to, to have their voices heard. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that we have um, we're dealing with is that we live in a time, I don't have to tell any of you this, that things are so polarized politically. And we're not really interested in dealing with that polarization. We are interested, as we've been saying, of getting the basic information out and helping people to then move in their communities and do things that they want in their communities. And so we are what some of our challenges now that we are looking at, and we're very new. We just launched in 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 um, January. Um, these two, with the, I, I say that I had the idea, I was the conception, but these two were the midwives, and they both work in healthcare because it would not have been born otherwise. It really would not have been born otherwise. And they're the ones who really said, "Well, there needs to be a newsletter, and it needs to be a newsletter that's not just around, you know, what we're doing, but." really ties us into the monthly things. You know, this month is Women's Month, for instance, or Disability Month. It ties it in with that. So, and I thought, that's great. You know, so they develop, this, this thing here, they develop. I mean, this is all, they, they are the ones who put the flesh onto this idea, you know, that I had and continue to and continue to come up with new ideas. We made some decisions, you know, we, it, it, at first I thought, well, I could just, it, it, before they were even involved, thank goodness I didn't do this, but I thought I could just send it out to organizations that have around the, the, the country that have other people who they think might be interested in. It's gotten smaller and smaller in a good way, smaller and more focused on Mifflinburg community which is different. Years ago, when I worked at the community center, we were going to expand a branch of the Donald Community Center to Mifflinburg, and I had some community people meeting, meeting with them. And one guy said, not unkindly, but very pointedly, you know, Mifflinburg is different from Lewisburg, <laughs> you know, okay? So that, that's, that's one of the things that we really decided, no, we're not going to just do rural central Pennsylvania. We're literally going to do Mifflin. So that's one of the decisions that we made. We also have played around with who exactly to reach out to in Mifflinburg and decided we're not going to do it by age exactly because parents need to be involved and you know, young people need to be involved in everything. We're going to do it by 
this will give you information that you may not have had before. So anybody, it's open to anybody, but we've decided to, to you know, so we've had, we had that kind of challenge. And we also had the challenge of that we want to help people to get involved in a way that is meaningful for what they want in their community. Not because, you know, fight for 15 is a good idea. Yeah, we might think that's a great idea, but that may not be anything related to what they want in their community. So that's a, another thing. So we've thought of different ways of getting people involved. One having to do with helping people to um, who want to go as, as these two did, they had to on their own figure out, Tiffany figured out first, then help Felicia, but she had to figure out all on her own, how do you go to college from a family that had not gone to college and was not necessarily supportive of them going to college because what that means is a lot of output of money, you know, and what do you get back from that, you know, or secondary education or whatever, you know, so that's one idea we've had. Another idea we've had is a leadership you know, that you could put on a resume for either job or whatever, sort of knowing that these things put you in a place that you have more leadership abilities. We've looked at the issue, uh, that we're starting to look at the issue that maybe we'll use some things around mediation because that helps you be able to deal with conflict when there's difference of opinions, you know, how, how, to, how to deal with that. So we're, we're playing around with a lot of, we have, you know, I have some people who are watching us and said, well, What's going on with rock? You know, because they want to know how are you organized? How are you? Slowly, I always say, slowly, but really deliberately, and wanting to make sure. I I I use this uh, analogy. I went bowling for the first time when I was visiting just at, about three weeks ago, but I use this analogy. The kind of political organizing I've done before is like bowling. You have an, an, an you have a down there at the end there you have the goal get those pins down, right? You have to get the energy together, how much energy to throw it down there and get everything together. You gotta know where the spots on the floor to put it to get there and, and you let it go and you see what happens and then you do it again, okay? That's what, it, this is like pickup sticks. You take a look at each little stick. If you've ever done pickup sticks, you, know, you hold sticks like this and they fall and then you have to remove them. And you, you have to remove them without moving. The, so how do you move somebody and help them without kind of rearranging everything that you might get pushback from people who don't want that person to be moved. So it's like pickup sticks, you know, it's a very different way of going about it. So it's been challenging to me, which is fun in my mid seventies, I'm being challenged, you know. Um, and then just, we we're really playing around with how can we help? And if, if you go on our website, you'll see that we have, um, some statements of what we believe. And they're all about local and your own involvement. It has nothing to do, in fact, there's one statement that says, we don't believe in ideologies because that's never helped anybody. So we're really trying to figure out how do we do this work and not get, fall into ideological battles, which we're not interested in. It just, we don't think that's helpful. So um, that, that's where we are right now. It's just the challenge of thinking about how do we reach out to people and give them a sense of agency because of information and then help them work together. We have a, a Thursday, the, la the third Thursday of every uh, month, we have a gathering for whatever the module, the teaching module has been for that, you know, for that month, the, the information there to help people make that part of their lives, not just something you read, but part of your own life, you know, how do you integrate that into the work that you're doing? So we're, we're, we're just taking it slowly and we're open to thoughts and ideas and feedback from people. And um, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add. And the newsletter um, that comes out, we send it out at the beginning of every month and it will outline what module we have. Um, we also have a podcast um, and Felicia has been amazing with that. We're looking into doing, um, a community spotlight each month as well, um, just on local businesses or groups where we could just get information out to the public. And you have a Facebook page. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how is your newsletter distributed? Is it via email? Yeah, yeah. Once anybody signs up as a Roth member that we add you to our list and each month we send it out. Mm -hmm. 
I was listening to <clears throat> your comment about when you said that the third, I don't know, was it Thursday? Thursday? doesn't matter. Anyway, that depending on the module, uh, that was the focus for that particular gathering. And I'm wondering what kind of response have you got? One thing, a, a goal of ours isn't to get a huge number of members. We want to make it more personalized and we want people to know they have an issue or a concern, they can come directly to us. Mm -hmm. That's another big aspect. And with having a few members at that first workshop, it really let us dive into some of the the topics mm -hmm. and, and get to know the members as well. Mm -hmm. And going off of that, on our website, we actually have a link to a passion survey. So anyone who signs up to be a member, we also send it out to them as well. It's just a survey asking what your interests and passions are. And then that gets sent directly to us. And then we reach out to whoever filled out the survey and kind of sees where they, you know, would fit in and where they would like to help. Um, so that's another personalized level, which is really nice. Going along with the idea of the pickup sticks, um, as, as Tiffany said, we're not that interested. And this is the first time for me, because usually we are interested in how many people we reach. You know, that's, we want the newsletter to go out to a lot of people, and a lot of people to come to our Thursday evenings things, and blah, 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 such. We're not, because we're really looking at the pickup sticks. So you, that means being each person, you have to look much more carefully at what they need and what would help them move along. What are their blocks? And who are they connected with, who they might bring in, right. who then you're going to look very carefully at their blocks and what they need and so forth so it's a very different way of of organizing and i think that many of us around the country are looking at ways of in involving people in rural areas who've not been involved before um and so that's the, that's the question we're looking at ourselves and we're looking at it very slowly because it's going to be very different my belief is it's going to be very different organizing from what we've done when you're already organizing people who are kind of there already. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you probably know that from this group. Mm -hmm. Those who are already say, oh, ethical side, that sounds good. They'll sign up, all right? But what about those who are just out there and they, they look at, I don't even know what ethical means. I, I don't know what that means. Why would I say, it has nothing to do with me. How do you reach those people? So I think any organization has some of the same things. And we're just kind of looking with a spotlight and a magnifying glass. We're kind of looking with a magnifying glass of what 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 does one do to reach out to people who go, that has nothing to do with me. And, and, and many people are like that. They just don't feel that the organizations have anything to do with them. Their families were not involved with their organizations. Their parents, they themselves are not, who they hang out with are not. It's just not their culture mm -hmm. to be involved with organizations. Right. And yet they often feel neglected or feel angry that they're not being listened to or feel just alienated, uh, et cetera. So that's what we're with this, thank you, magnifying glass. <laughs> we're really looking at this very, very closely and seeing what makes a difference. Yeah, and I think when you mentioned culture, you know, we have in our vision, you know, we, you know, we take care of, you know, self-care, community care, and culture care. Yes. And and I think that really is important. You know, we have to look at, you know, not only, you know, the different cultures that are meeting here, but what is the the culture of a rural mm -hmm. community and 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 how do you create something that is welcoming and and to those mm -hmm. yeah I know do you find um I know I'm just because I handle our Facebook mm -hmm. All right and I know how difficult it is to get people to share it you know an emotion to make a comment or to actually go and share that onto their own Facebook pages. And I'm wondering, because I follow, I follow yours. I have, I get your newsletter. I'm on your website. I've watched some of those podcasts, you know, your first ones. And I'm like, you know, this is fantastic. So 
do you find folks sharing? At this point, not a whole not lot. Yet. The way that we're sort of strategizing is, you know, we're on there and we're sharing local events. We're sharing local businesses. We're getting info about Mifflinburg out there. And a, a goal I think would be that, you know, these other, the businesses, the organizations, you know, we're supporting them. So I'm hoping that in, in, in time, they'll support us right, as well. Right, right. Yeah. So I, I think that's where we're at right now. We don't have a lot of followers on Facebook mm -hmm. yet. Um, but we're mm -hmm. we're getting there. No, there she goes. Cool. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, and I, and I think too, you know, um, and I think that is, you know, sharing, because, um, you know, I've been trying to share oh, things, yes, you know, on see, our yes. on our page, <laughs> and that. yeah, so and, and that's really important. I don't think people quite understand yet how Facebook works, and, and you know, how th that networking, and, you know, even if, if someone posts yeah. something, you know, that maybe necessarily isn't your thing, but you post it because you want someone else in your network where it might be their thing. Yeah. And so you're giving your Facebook community the opportunity to find something that maybe resonates with them, even though it might not. And, yeah. and I saw on Facebook, and I don't know if this is a new feature, but they have where you can boost your post and right. get it out there. But to me, it's that may cloud the vision a little bit. Like, mm -hmm. I, like we said, instead of having a huge number of followers, we want people who who you know are are local and, and who. Mm -hmm. So instead of getting it out to thousands of people, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to have three people share it that, that are sure. you know, familiar with yeah. the area and, and with the community. Right. You had a question. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's so a comment you made earlier that got me thinking. I mean, I'm real relative newcomer to the SBS, I guess it's a couple of years now. Yeah, it has been. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm I'm one of those people I feel like that you're talking about that I I I wasn't really part of any kind of congregational community before this even came up. And I'm sort of thinking that one of the things that appealed to me when I signed up was this idea of what you're saying, like I there's nowhere where I'm like heard where my ideas or ideas of other people who might think like me could maybe get together or people who don't think like me and um and i remember that appealed to me and i remember even one of the early meetings we talked about sort of uh the sbs as, as, as maybe a way to or i felt like it could be a way to sort of amplify one's voice and and i don't know that just still like really resonates mm -hmm. with me that people i feel like i don't know what's going on with all the with all the con religious congregations dwindling and all that yet, but I, I do feel like psychologically you know we know that people want a sense of belonging they want a sense yeah. of, yeah. of of voice of of being heard and so I think you're you know, talking about this. <laughs> and that's I, why I came over oh, yes. all exactly. <laughs> um your time is impeccable so, um, and yeah I just I, I really still resonate with that idea I think that that's there, there's something there about people needing a uh, an opportunity to be heard. And mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a lot of other people in the community who who feel that way. Um, solution to that, I don't know. But like yeah. as you're talking to, I'm thinking, you know, you're talking about Facebook. I think this practically. Hold on a second. Uh, like next door, I feel it kind of has that. I mean, it's weird because it's not really a place for political discourse or or. Mm -hmm a lot of social discourse but it ends up being a place that i see many people engaged and mm -hmm. acting like a community mm -hmm. of neighbors sometimes it's mm -hmm. about like people's lost cats you know and dogs mm -hmm. but sometimes it's about recommendations sometimes it is about people being bothered by something happening in the community like mm -hmm. fireworks going off too much you know i mean there's just, there's just a lot there and they do have an opportunity for groups mm -hmm. as well so you can start a more right. politically oriented group or some. So just you know, mm -hmm. just putting it out there because I'm wondering too if like Facebook might be kind of dwindling too and it's it's used for the kind of thing that we want. And I, I feel like you still want there, you still want to be connected to a broader yeah. you know, like to feel like your voice is being heard in more than just your own little insular group of a few people. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. And we have talked about the next door and 
and you know other ways of getting information out and so yeah i'll be curious you know mm -hmm. as you're progressing you know mm -hmm. what are you finding is going to be the maybe you know that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah 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 people and and what is his name amir amir yeah. mm -hmm. i think amir you really hit on something that i think we all are aware of and that is the isolation that people feel which was amplified a million times by COVID, and we're not really gotten kind of back from there and then during that time we see anger everything you know everyone's losing friends and because of political stuff and so how do you get back to just being people with yeah. each other yeah and being human with each other and we know studies have shown that a tribe that's more than about 150 people doesn't function it splits when it gets to about 150 people so that's a small group of people and so even small towns like Mifflinburg are larger than that so how do we give voice mm -hmm. to people who don't have they're not in sync with their neighbors and everything in the way that people have been in the past um, and I'm not sure that everybody felt heard in the past I think we have a little bit of a rosy idea of how everyone was connected in the past in a way that I mean I'm not sure that that was really ever quite the uh, way I, it was you're right I, don't think so I, I, I think that you know we, we, we sometimes have a rosy idea mm -hmm. and being in my 70s I have an idea that hmm, when was that time mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. well yeah and I don't think people realized that they had could have a voice I yeah. think everyone was very you know it's like having a board of directors yeah. you know everyone in that whatever organization it is you know seems to be very content having those few people on a board making all the grand decisions and you're just going to follow along and that's not mm -hmm. you know it, it's just not how mm -hmm. communities should be working yeah yeah i yeah. thought both of your things about the board meeting coming having been an organization uh -huh. in person for years the board meeting coming to your meetings and not being something that's separate is a very good idea. Mm -hmm. And the moving around of who runs, runs, does the work and runs the show and is the face of is a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. fingers crossed, but I think I yeah. think it is a good way for this a community who is in ethics. Yes. You know, I think it's it's the way to go. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, but but so okay, so what might um you know what might Susquehanna and Rock create, do? I mean, something that would be fun that might get, you know, some because we do have a lot of commonalities. I mean, we are very much value centered. And and so any any thoughts that I would well I don't know if you have any but uh, um, I, I mean I know we discussed different events that we would like to do in the future um I think right now with starting off and, and trying to get um people who aren't necessarily involved in the organizations trying to get them mm -hmm. you know out of out of the um, meetings that would work, um, but but trying to get those people out, I think right now is going to be one of our main priorities. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually, we would like to start doing local events. Um, yeah. So any collaboration with events will be amazing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's what I was thinking too. That we'll yeah. get to that. Yeah. But if you know of any people, mm -hmm. and if you know of any people who kind of don't feel that involved, but you have a sense that they might want to be more involved with something. We decided that we would like to get two to four more people to work with us, the three of us who are now the ones who did the work, to, to just be a little, to expand it to those people and give that time for those people to feel part of and to be, you know, to join. So if you, and we thought we, the people that we know are people who are already involved with other things. Yeah. We want people who are not involved because the medium is the message. Okay. You know, you were not involved with other things and you can be involved with us and we take the time. We don't, we're not just going to plug you in somewhere. We're going to take the time 
to make uh, to expand our community of three to a community of five or six or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So if you know of anybody now that you think of, you know, who said, oh, you know, but you have a sense it has some and, it, it, and we're not talking about we don't just say politics, mm -hmm. just what we're looking for is people who are kind of committed to they're, they're questioning how things are. They want to be more involved. That's really what we're right. looking for. So if you do, let us know where you can. Yeah. Is this, happen. are you looking specifically for Mifflinburg I folks at this, this point? point yes. you're, okay, so we're specifically yeah. thinking of. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, I know me as an example, when I was younger, based on what I would hear my parents and my parents' friends talking about, I thought government was all national. I didn't know anything about local government mm -hmm. or how, you know, I, and one of the teaching modules actually this month is lobbying and advocacy. And just knowing that you can go and talk to a representative about concerns. Mm -hmm. I didn't know any of that. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a big advocate for a long time of thorough civics education in our public schools. And what I've seen over the years has been a almost pointed erosion mm -hmm. of that and it goes back to what Penn Garvin has been saying about our government wanting us to be ignorant, um, somewhat complacent, and feeling a little bit ignorant and helpless and letting, letting someone else handle that. Um, do you see your uh, organization as filling that void in the public school system, you know, reaching out to groups of children somehow? because I feel that's really uh, very important. Uh, in the 40s, our country was united behind the war effort and everybody was involved and knew what was going on. And there was a lot of activists, but in the 60s, it was the, the Civil Rights Act and everybody was involved in getting involved in things. And somehow through the uh, Reagan years, Everyone just sort of slacked off and became apathetic. Things maybe were a little comfortable. I don't know what all the, the factors were, but one of the problems I've had over the years is I couldn't wait to be 18 so I could be a voter. Mm -hmm. And I don't even remember where I picked up on that, except possibly my fifth grade teacher who used to be very uh, proactive with, with civic engagement and teaching us as a classroom the branches of government and things like that. That's the only place I got that besides uh, Schoolhouse Rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, uh, even now I have friends who have never voted in their lives. And I ask them, aren't you concerned about what's happening? And, and don't you, well, it won't make a difference mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. they say. Mm -hmm. Or the one I get a lot is, I don't want to be stressed out about things because I have enough to do and I just don't want to be, I don't need any more stress in my life. It's all I can do just to keep up with what I'm doing right here and right now. And they don't realize how much better they could make things for themselves where they feel marginalized. I need to figure out how to reach them. That's what we're working yeah. on. And I mean, I, I had a friend say, if you keep at it, going to shut you down mm -hmm. and I was at risk of losing her as a Facebook friend because I'd say you know there's a, a, a you know a special election coming up that you really should you know look into or and, nope don't want to be a part of that and if you keep bugging me I'm going to shut you down you know part of that though I want to point this out I, I am not we were laughing earlier I technology is not my thing okay so thank god these two have come along because I couldn't I could not do, even if I wanted to, I could not do this. So when I hear technological new things, I kind of shut down. I have to say, I sort of shut down because I don't have the A, B, and C, and you're giving me Z over here. And I'm like, <laughs> my God, yeah, it's, that's way too much for me, you know? So I kind of use that in thinking politics and political and how to, that's my thing. So I'm like the IT person who asks me the question, where do you get this? If you don't have A, B, C, and D, when you start saying, get involved with guns and everything like that, I can imagine, I'm not saying this is what happens, but I can imagine if I use the analogy with what I would do, I would go like, oh yeah, right. You know, I'm never gonna be able to do that. 
And then it's like, why do we have all this new technology? I put it out on, I, would, I just want to shut it down. You know, so I can kind of see, I think that it has to do with, if you haven't gotten the basics, it's gone on so far, like getting involved with gut, like that's a complicated issue, but I've done bowling a lot. So I'm, I'm, you know, I used to doing that. I could tell you what to do, but if I don't know A, B, and C, if I don't know the, the, you know, the branches of government and how they work and have no idea, feels like. And therefore, I don't want to hear any more about it. It just makes me feel bad about myself. And I'm just using that analogy from, you know, I, I have to find all this help. I, it, you know, it, TikTok is like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Facebook. <laughs> so I get it, but it's in a whole different arena, but I get it. And yeah, that's an all, issue. all of those things and talking about those issues and not expecting them to jump to way over here, but just feeling like, oh, somebody understands what it feels like to be overwhelmed, you know, to, um, I think that, that that's kind of where we're thinking. We've okay. got to start there, where people are. And having been someone who's used to the bowling, get pinned <laughs> down, all down to the pins there. It's very different to be like, okay, what do I need to do with this pickup? Do I lift it here? Do I lift it there? Can I do it in the middle? I mean, this is a whole different, different kind of thing. And but I think it's what's needed. You know, the podcasts and and the um, the the videos presentations you're doing are excellent ones well, I have seen so far. Well, they are so good. well First done. Time we've done anything. Yeah. Yeah. Learn. And and um and and the one that came through on my phone this morning on your um, um, getting involved um, advocates. Oh, lobbying. Ad yeah, lobbying, yes, which I didn't get a chance to, to um, tune into yet. But these are things that as an ethical society, mm -hmm. culture, you know, we do. Mm -hmm. um, not well, we haven't gotten, you know, into writing letters mm -hmm. together and um, you know, setting up a time to go protest at something that's, you know, um, that we're very much, you know, all in line with. So I'm, I'm thinking, okay, so the programs that you're putting out that I'd like to encourage the members here to, I guess it it's, would be through your website or you can get to it through the website or we have a YouTube channel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So is it on here? Okay. Cause I haven't looked at that or, yet. Or info at, you know. If, yeah. If you want to sign up, we can send yeah. everything. Okay. Okay. And, and, you know, so being able to, you know, tune into these topics because we in turn as our organization, these are things we need to know and how to act. And also it gives you a way of how to talk about these things mm -hmm. with other people. Yeah, like right. we're going to do a, a, the advocacy, the lobbying right. advocacy. That we're going to go on and figure out in Mifflinburg, people need to know that there is a borough council. Mm -hmm. They need to know who's on the borough council. They need to know what a borough council does. They need to know where in Union County you go to register to vote. How do you go about doing it if you want to? And you know these are very simple things that so often we just sort of take. Of course, as a borough council, and you want to go, go and talk, get on the agenda. Not everybody knows That's that. What I do right now, and they don't even know. It, as as Tiffany said, she didn't even know there was anything other than the federal government. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of thing that we want to teach on a very local level. So as you read it, you might not need to know these things but it might give you an idea of how to talk with other people right. about it mm -hmm. so that's kind of what you know all of this is about yes yeah. how do we impart this do what you've been doing You're for answering all, do my, for years. all my needs here <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you focus solely on Mifflinburg borough or any place that calls themselves Mifflinburg so, like I live outside of Mifflinburg oh yeah um, Oh, but it's still Mifflinburg. Yes, I, I live outside the borough also. I'm in Limestone Township, but it's you write it to my street address, it's Mifflinburg. Right. So yeah, so yeah. In one of our upcoming projects, we, we've been discussing and nothing set in stone, but mm -hmm. we, we want to find out how we could best 
communicate with kids and, and teach mm-hmm. them this info because I know my daughter, she goes to Mifflinburg, she's 15. She's not going to want to sit and learn um, similar to like she would be in school. That's true. Yeah, That's true. Have to That's find right. a way to reach them. Uh-huh. Um, it has to be fun. Well, that what's conversation. in it for me? Yeah. Uh-huh. You find yeah. the what's in it for me? <clears throat> You know, you know I, my daughter's 13 and she comes home and she wants to see change, but she has no idea how to make it happen. Yeah. No, she doesn't know how things work. She doesn't so want to hear it from exactly, that. That's exactly. That's so, exactly who we're reaching out to. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if high school, does, does Mifflinburg require uh, community service of their no. seniors or anything? Or? I don't think so. I mean, not when I was. Yeah. Well, I know it's something that was instituted in a lot of schools in the past 10 years or so, but they require yes. community service. I don't know if that's a Mifflinburg thing. Right now. Well, and um, by all means, if you wouldn't mind, I mean, if you wanted to have your daughter sign up, we're working on developing leadership skills for her age group. I know my daughter, um, we were talking about having a, a youth program. Yes, um, that's what, so. yes. I'll talk. Yes. Yes. What would you go through the website, through the oh, Facebook? Yeah, email. If you just want to send us an email, that, that email will get you through to any of us. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if you could and just send us an email. Help guide her on how she can yeah, make a That difference. would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah and I think that's, think your daughter's not alone yeah no absolutely um, i'm just wondering trying to clarify in my own mind like there, there seem to be two different goals here potentially i mean one is with like this critical race theory stuff or, or you know if, if the goal is to try to get people involved to um to get like people in civic and local government mm-hmm. and, and and all that mm-hmm. and, and to try to change those it's a thing um then, then I feel like we, you know, then, then you almost have to follow the playbook of the people who are like trying to elect the election deniers and stuff to, to local elector boards or whatever you call that, and, and and trying to get people on the school boards who are opposed to critical race theory, like whatever they're doing. Yeah, it's a lot of it feels like it's hate based. Is is too hot. <laughs> 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 Then I feel like we got to get people up in arms about specific issues and to to work on those. But if the goal is to try to get people who are the silent majority of people who have mm-hmm. more moderate views to to be just engaged generally, then I feel like that's almost like a different thing. Yeah, because there's specific issues that can get people around, like critical race theory. I almost feel like you need to get or election denial. I feel like you need to work to actively get people who are not like anti-democracy to be in those positions you know that's not our goal right yeah there are other organizations the hub for progress uh there are other organizations that will do that you know our goal is the second group of people the ones who are not because how you in my opinion i think in our opinion i think i'm the way you break that either or it's your you're either for crt or you're against a crt is you are training people what it means to build a good community, mm-hmm. which is neither for or against CRT. It's about building a good, so it's like a different issue. And that's what we need to raise people up to, uh, to be able to understand and being able to mm-hmm. talk about and being able to be vocal about, not in an angry way, not in a way that they've been told by somebody else you should be against CRT, which is what this guy was. You know, He was rabble roused into being against something. Not that way, but because you yourself understand what it means to build a good community where everybody's included. And so if you're going to run for school board, you're not running against CRT or for CRT or anything about that. You're running to create a good community and a good school where teachers are respected, administration is respected, school board members are respected, children are respected, everybody's respected. That's a whole different way of and it's mm-hmm. it, our society now in our way that our our poli- our electoral politics is set up is not set up that way right. it's set up to defend one thing or another or attack one thing or another it, it just it's not set up that way i think when you think about it community you respect the worth and dignity of every single human being. Yes. And you don't do anything that takes that agency, their yeah. worth away yeah. from them. Yeah. There's a saying that mm-hmm. I saw that I really liked. It was on a placard at some point that it said, respect 
existence. If something exists, you got to respect mm -hmm. it or expect, expect resistance. resistance. Yes. That if somebody's existence is being denied in whatever way, they're going to resist. Mm -hmm. And so how do you go in and just go, we respect, we might not even understand certain things, but we respect. But that's a hard thing, but we, we have to practice that. Everybody has to practice whatever it is that you don't like. Right. Yes, Kim, I just, ahead and, and I just had a, a quick thought. Um, going back to giving uh, people agency and starting uh, with children and uh, civic engagement, I'm wondering how feasible would it be to give a teacher's workshop for Mifflinburg elementary school level teachers, even the you know earliest years, and just you know teach them to find uh reasons to let their classroom vote on things show them little you know snippets of what democracy feels like even in that simplistic way are we going to have our our recess first or snack break first let's have a vote and you know just little baby steps like that from the very outset to make them think hey i have a choice i can make yeah and uh this sounds like something that you girls would be fantastic to go in and do <laughs> i would love to do something like that. yeah 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 well we right now and i know you do have to end yes right? so, mm -hmm. we right now are in the kind of going out talking to different people we've been talking mm -hmm. to some different community leaders and i don't necessarily mean the mayor and the but you know people who are movers and shakers in the community in mifflinburg mm -hmm. what do you see would be useful mm -hmm. how could we get this information out? coming here and talking to you all and sort of, and doing some thinking, getting a few more people involved in this, mm -hmm. and then just sort of trying our next step. But all these are really good ideas. And at some point that would be something. Right. So this has been wonderful. Yes, this has been really great. Gang, thanks so much. And, and again, gang, check out their programs um, that they have. And I'm going to 